Howdy do, folks. Lucky you don't have to see my face, but I got a piece of paper here and I got the panel here. Uh, I figured that was better than getting everybody dizzy while I set up uh, doing that instead of having, and I don't have a clever wig to wear this week uh, because that'd be silly after Halloween. Anyway, just jump right into it. Uh, what you're going to see today is different kinds of patterns being done. And if you didn't read the big paragraph that I posted on Facebook, this is sort of a learning process for me too, because I need to learn where to stop to make it a simple pattern. But I will continue after that. I'm just going to show you each step. But I actually struggled. If you watched more than one show of mine, I actually struggled to uh, make simple. So I will actually need feedback. And that's why we have Dave, Paul, and uh, uh, Mitter Mike here to, uh, oh, my, da my daughter's in there. KCD is my daughter watching it. Love you, Dad. I love you too, darling. That's my daughter, seriously. My biological daughter. Wish she was here with me. Everybody say hi to KC. Hi. Hi, KC. <laughs> that was the only one that had feeling in it. KC's my daughter. I, lo I love it when she watches. That's so flattering. I love that girl. Yeah, anyway. Uh, she's two hours away from me. I wish she was sitting next to me. Anyway. Uh, Casey, meet meet all my friends. <laughs> That's so sweet. I'm sorry, I'm my heart melted when I saw her out there. Anyway, so I don't even remember what I was saying. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go through different features, but I'm also going to uh, the show might go long because there's a lot I want to cover, and but I hope that in the end people will think it's worth it. And that's not me downing myself. It's just you know I some I know no matter how good a show is. Sometimes when they get along, people, you know, get a little bored. But I'm not going to do what I did last week and get bored and stop. If there's a lot of people viewing, I will keep going. Anyway, I may keep going anyways because I'm like that. And you can ask my daughter. She's addicted to Dr. Pepper, too. Anyway, I'm going to go down the line introduce our panel. Uh, and after I do that, uh, so that nothing is covered up, I'm going to present myself and hide the panel. And that's only so that... Y'all don't miss anything, although I doubt anything will be in the, the lower corner here. So, I'm going to start from my left to right. My left is Miter Mike. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Golly. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I don't know why. It might, for some reason, everything was there except the unmute button. My name is Michael Murray with uh, Miter Mike's Woodshop. You can find me on all the social medias. Uh, you go to my website, www.mitermikeswoodshop.com. Thank you for having me. And hey, Charles, if we're on, if I'm on your show, you can introduce me as Scroll Saw Mike if you want. Awesome. I'm gonna write a message to my daughter right quick. It's gonna embarrass the hell out of her, but this stuff happens. Sorry for the lull. Okay, I should have just said it because she's in the chat and can hear me, but love you so much. I'm so glad you're here. Anyway, Pablo Astudillo, Astudillo is here. Thank you for being here. I believe he was the one that's on uh, the Scroll Saw and Bandsaw group. Uh, has been asking advice about patterns, and he is rocking it. Uh, he will be the one of the next big and come big the up and comers. Shut up, Charlie. You cannot multitask. Okay, and I have the camera on mic the whole time with while he's grinning at me talking smack. Anyway, Paul out of Michigan. Hey everybody. Paul Corliss from Paul's Messy Workshop on YouTube. Paul's Messy Workshop on Instagram and sorta Paul's Messy Workshop.com. It's under construction and has been for a long time. And uh, thanks for having me on, Charles. Thank you. I'm, I, I just giggled that you said it, sort of. Uh, next, we have Portal Woodworks, otherwise known as otherwise known as David Jones, the cardboard killer. <laughs> Long <Yeah>. story. <laughs> yeah, We're, we, we don't have time for that tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm David from Portal Woodworks. Um, you can find me on portalwoodworks.com. Uh, Portal Woodworks on YouTube. Instagram, Twitter. And that's all of it. All right. 
I guess so. Uh, There's too many of them to keep I up. I hear you. And uh, Dave and Mike are uh, proud members of Maker Media Network and sponsored by Hornell Media, as am I. Uh, That's right. Again, that does not make us better than other people. We just happen to be part of a network. Uh, we this, this video and all my videos are sponsored by Harnell Media. Uh, dot com. Uh, you can go there. He specializes in the maker websites, uh, but that's not all he does. He just specializes in it. And uh, the network is not a, a costing thing. It's just you go to makersmedianetwork.com, dot com. You. Uh, Send them your info, info, and they correspond and uh, get questions. Possibly, I don't know the whole process, so I don't want to say too much. Uh, and they will consider adding you into the network. Uh, it, it is for the purpose of literally networking, co-op, helping each other, promoting each other. Uh, once again, and thank you so much, Dave, for the uh, super chat. I just happened to glance out of the corner of my eye. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide the panel because they're prettier than I am. And that way y'all don't miss anything. I really don't need to hide it, do I? No, I don't. I don't need to hide the dang thing. But I will present so that so that uh, the camera stays on me in case there's any noises. How you doing, Lee Niden and Niantic River, Chris Neal and Arnold Media? Yeah, the application, that's what I meant to say. There's an application. On hard on a uh, makersmedianetwork.com. Yeah, I'm not thinking too many thoughts at once. But anyway, stop looking at the chat, Charlie. Uh, okay, now the reason why you're sitting here, you're probably thinking, why don't you have a picture in front of you? Well, that's because just like on my DVDs that that used to be out, now they're downloadable on website woodenvisions.com, which is run by Steel ne Steve Steel Nealin. Steve Nealin. I'm getting worse than a uh, hobby on that. Run by Steve Nealon, and everything on that website is downloadable, and uh, and I'm tickled to death about that. I have Steve Nealon to thank for that, so thank you, Steve Nealon. Anyway, let me get the paper square to the camera. Uh, I start every pattern out with a clean sheet of paper. I do mine on paper for those that don't know. If you're a first time watcher, I do it on a clean sheet of paper on a piece of glass. The reason why I do it on a piece of glass is I don't want any accidental lines. You know, if I do a line up here and there's a bump on the table, it's gonna make a bump on the line so if there's any bumpy lines on here that's my fault so I have a clean sheet of paper and the darkest I look for the darkest carbon paper or transfer paper I could find and I found that under uh, you'll have to look at my affiliate links down in the description uh, there's a specific link on Amazon where I get mine because it's the darkest I have found I can't remember the name because I was supposed to remember it for this, but it is a great place to get your carbon paper. It comes in four by eight sheets, but I cut them down to sheets of paper. Anyway, just making. Hey, Charles, do you use a certain uh, tip pen, like a felt tip, a uh, ballpoint? Ball, ballpoint, or, or the, 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 the thinner the better because you can get more precise lines, but I. Nine times out of ten, it's a ballpoint, so that's probably what it'll be tonight. You know, and I don't, have, I don't have any fancy art pens or anything, but they do make smaller nibs. I, if I could find the kind that came into a point that's not such a traditional ballpoint, I would probably use those, but I don't happen to have any in front of me. So, wait, I might have just found one. Looky there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll be using that pen. My luck, the pen won't work. But anyway, I'm going to tape up the rest of this. Now, as like as you y'all aren't just gonna be watching me trace stuff. You, I'm gonna try to give y'all, yeah, fine line pen, rusty nails. Uh, I can never remember everybody's name, so forgive me. Uh, I'm also going to be explaining the decisions I'm making, and I might change my mind in real time. It's the same thing I do on the downloadable videos because I want you to hear every process, I, every thought process I have when I'm making a pattern. But uh, the first couple patterns I'm doing are about features. And the first one is, we could probably go with the nose and the smile, but a lot of people wonder, how do you do somebody with a smile? And you don't have to trace every aspect. So I'm going to take this in place. And uh, this one will probably be a simple pattern uh, in, in the average person's eyes. 
but I'm only going to tape one side so that since I'm talking about doing simple patterns, I need to stop at some point and lift the paper up to show you what a simple pattern would look like. And I need something heavy to hold the paper in place while I tape it. That's not a stash. It's got grooming supplies and that nail clippers and stuff like that. <laughs> it's just for you naughty people out there. Anyway, okay. Now, this is quite simple. Now, when you see this, th this one probably, y'all could probably understand it, and y'all can unmute yourselves on the panel and agree or disagree. Uh, but I would think you, you, you would understand why this is going to be a relatively simple pattern. You're welcome to guess. It doesn't make you stupid if you guess wrong. Because there's only part of the face there? Well, yeah, part of the face, and there's not much detail showing, to be honest. I mean, yes, if I wanted to be particular, I don't know how well that shows up on camera. There's a little bitty wrinkles in there, but that doesn't need to be added. The things I'm concentrating on are the, the shadows here. Now, this is an example of what makes somebody have a unique face, a unique smile. So what you got to include that if it's a custom portrait. If you're just making a face for the sake of a face, you don't need to. But for everybody that doesn't know that, there is no top of the picture. It's just I picked this feature. Anyway, I'm going to do this as quickly as possible so I can cover as many as possible. If that's not zoomed in enough, y'all let me know, and I'll make you dizzy by moving the camera closer because it's zoomed in as far as it can go, I think. Uh, I think maybe. you're fine. Okay, although... I don't know. Can you see where there's two lines sort of forking right here? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look, let me zoom in ever so much, ever so closer. Ever so closer. I think that's a word. Jim Bashir says it's simple because you're doing it. Aw. Thanks, Jim. I like to call him Jimothy. Anyway. Okay, now there's a little fork here I'm going to ignore because that, well, no, why ignore it? See, there's an example of me changing my mind in real time. <laughs> Y'all better get used to that. But anyway, one of them starts here, and I could get away with just using it. And I'm pretty confident y'all can see that dark pen line up against that light-colored face. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now it's really thin here, and that fork comes off right here, but it might be unique to her smile, so I'm going to add it. But uh, if, if you do something on paper and you don't like the way it looks, you can edit it. Uh, your, the only reason I bring mine on a computer is to clean up the lines, make sure they're connected so I can color it in for display purposes. Now, you can either put your pilot hole right there where those two lines intersect or in that little thick area because that's, that's where uh, the shadow is darkest, just like you'll see right here. The shadow is the darkest there, so that's the best spot to put a pilot hole. And uh, she has this weird little uh, dimple here. And that's unique to her. So if you're doing a custom portrait, you want to add unique things like this. If they have acne, some of them will ask you to give them plastic surgery. And you just got to do what the customer wants. I've had people that wanted me to take off some of their chins, you know, after they gained a few pounds. But I won't get into that because I don't want to get any haters. <laughs> anyway, so that's one half already done. And Your I will daughter. get into... Your daughter says she's got to get going. Oh, I love you, darling. Uh, have fun, and thank you for uh, watching. Uh, okay, now we'll do this side. This one's even easier than the last one. Y'all could probably say I'd be oh, I'm kind of sort of in the way. And I, uh, thank you for watching, Casey. That meant a lot. Uh, <laughs> hope she wasn't on one of the thumbs down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, so we got that. We got a little bit of thickness here to show the darkness. I might have exaggerated a little bit, but there's your pilot hole for that. Uh, the nose is not very extreme. You can almost never see the sides of the nostrils if there's not a lot of shadow. So I usually just do a a single, of course the pen's not going to work. I usually just do a single line. And it's a little crooked because I couldn't get the pen to work. But since it's just a single line, there's not really a place for a pilot hole. Some people will put it at the end, but I will just slightly add a slight thickness to part of it. They can almost act, act as a shadow, so there's your pilot hole for that. There's a little bit of a shadow here, but some things to me don't translate well. But I guess I could add it since it is in the photograph. 
And when I mean things don't translate well, it means some things look funnier in a drawing or a pattern. See, the pen isn't wanting to work on laser printer paper. That's the only drawback to laser printers. Florence Leedy wants to know, do you make the lines thicker when you scan it into the computer or do you leave them thin? Uh, by default, uh, Florence, when they're scanned in thicker, they will look thicker. Or when they're scanned in, I scan everything in at 300 dpi so you can resize it without distortion. Uh, but by default, it will uh, make the lines look thicker. They're about five pixels wide. I don't know if that makes any sense. Pixels are what make up a picture. That's probably the most basic way I can make a magnetic. My pen keeps stopping working. But anyway, uh, the, the nostrils, just trace them as you see them. Now, everybody's got that. I don't know what that's called. I, I know this part's called the cleft, I believe. <laughs> I know, I believe. Anyway, I usually connect this part of a nose to one of the nostrils. And now see that almost looks weird, but you saw me trace it right from the, the picture. But if you were to kind of blank out the actual photograph and all you see is the pencil lines, that's almost a weird looking nose. But that's what happens sometimes when you trace what you see. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on real quickly. There's not much of the nose showing up here, so I'm not really going to address that. Uh, the edge of the face would be just a simple line. And when you're doing a face like this, where the neck and the jawline meet up is always a good place to drill a pilot hole. And or and or where the ear meets the head. You can do a pilot hole there. But just you know, this is in the event that this line doesn't go all the way up to the ear. It just depends on how the rest of it looks. Either one of those could be a pilot hole. So you know, when you're working on a pattern, you, your mission isn't pilot holes, but usually I brought up the pilot holes because people might be thinking on these thin lines, where would you use one? That's why I was talking about it and it may have gone a little too thick on this, this uh, shadow here, but to me it actually looks out of place, but it was a shadow in the picture and it actually goes a little lower. But anyway, a lot of people wonder how do you do teeth, you know, without them being floaters and that's where you don't necessarily have to go with the darkness on the lips unless they have very, very, very dark lipstick. So I always tend to break up the the thing here and most the thing. Yeah, I know what you know what I mean. Hopefully you can see everything I'm tracing, but I, even I'm having trouble because the dark ink is keeping it from uh, going. I'm tracing it exactly what I see, and you see that tooth goes into that lower lip. So I stop that shadow there. And I'm not going all the way up with the lines that show the division between the teeth. So that right there is a single cut, and that gives you plenty of room to drill a pilot hole. And I will lift up the paper when I'm done to show you what I'm talking about. But I think the pen line showed up enough starting there. Or it ends there. Well, no, it ends, starts here, ends there. And I only did a line up to here. I didn't go all the way across because that would make that tooth in the dark be a floater. And okay, we did that, and I can bring this line up as well. A lot of this is going to seem like duh to y'all. I don't anybody outside of America. I don't know if y'all know what duh means, but it, a no-brainer, I guess. But that's a single cut. That's a pilot hole. But okay, if you're talking about simple patterns, when I get done doing all these various shadows, if it doesn't cause a floater, then you can connect all these, you know, loop de loops around the teeth and we'll see if that's going to work whenever I get done doing this. Matter of fact, I'll do it with this one even though it touches the lip. Not much of a shadow and matter of fact, I am going to connect as much of it as possible. I'm going to stop just short of where these two teeth meet so that I can start the line there on the next cut. Now, not adding some lines can add the impression of bright white teeth or, or not wanting too prominent of teeth. But where you get these shadows that, cut, that come more up than these, these are just barely little swoops, but that goes more up, so you can get away with adding that line in there. But uh, because she has gums, you know, which most people do. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going out of order here. I'll get back to the lines between these teeth.
Now you'll notice I stopped before getting to that point here. I'm going to start the point here to start another cut. When I say another cut, I mean another line, but it refers to when you're cutting it. And that will go right into here. And I'm going to go all the way up to where that tooth touches the, the lower lip. I don't know how well they show up, but the lower teeth are showing. And sometimes that can look funny in a scroll saw pattern. Is everybody able to hear me all right? Um, a bit uh, oh, yeah. volume wise? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, Russ. I'm glad hey. you could make it. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now, okay, we got the separation between the teeth down here. And I think there's a little bitty one here because it just has, you know, teeth. Huh? Not all of us do. I've got Go a ahead. question on that right there. Uh, the, I might not might even consider not even putting those in. And th that is that that's that's a very good point, Russ. If you're talking about the lower teeth, right? Because the I, lip is right there, so close. I might not even put those in. Yeah, and you can you can probably get away with that because you know these are the prominent teeth that are showing up. So I'm glad that's one benefit of having a panel here tonight because opinions. Are, are valued and and that makes a lot of sense you can leave that out and we can do that in the uh the uh computer part if we if we get to that uh but you'll notice after i'm bringing these lines down that separate the teeth i am not going to have a line that goes under there mm -hmm. and, unless i eliminate those lower teeth because otherwise it would make those lower teeth at least these three they would be floaters yeah. and there was a little bit of gap yeah, i'm just going to wonder how you're going to how you're going to Lip there. Uh, you can. Okay, once. Okay, I'll show you that as soon as I get a uh, couple more. Now, remember, there's a, a break in the line right here, so that that doesn't jumble it all up. But here's another separation between teeth, and right there, uh, it's kind of hard to make out what's going on there. So I'll just sort of wing it. Now, to answer your question regarding that bottom lip, rather than doing a line all the way across, you can suggest that line by at, at the bottom of that that separation between teeth, make a T and do that do do that with each one. As close as you're comfortable with anyways. You don't have to get too close to each other. If you think that's too close together, make it wider. And every one of these will suggest that lower lip. It almost looks like braces sort of, but there again, if you wanted to leave the lower teeth out like Russ Meadows mentioned, uh, that would be a reason why because sometimes it can be clutter uh chaos to the eye i hadn't even thought of that i just was drawing them because they were there but with the upper lip i almost always include uh almost all the way across but we don't want it to touch the shadows right. on the edge because it might be overkill but i say that but i might end up including it because i'm very decisive on camera <laughs> if any of it if you ah, take nabbit if any of you uh, have bought my DVDs, you will see that I'm not, <laughs> you will see me change my mind 30 million times because I do it in real time. I don't hide anything from people that are watching me design a pattern because I want them to know it's not always a very smooth process. I'm drawing these lines, but they're not showing up. That's why you see me scribbling over here to get the ink blowing. But ink, ink does not like laser printed paper. Florence Leedy said, bring the lip down a little so it's not touching the teeth. Uh, I'm not sure what she means. Me neither. That's just what she said. Bring the lip but, down but, a little so it's not touching the teeth. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Florence, but I don't know how to perceive that. Uh, uh, now, although that tooth is in the dark, I went ahead and just did the separations in it. But... And I was saying not to connect it to these shadows here, but I think you can get away with that. So I'm going to, and this will this will suggest. And there's not really a shadow, and I'm I, there's no reason I'm starting in the in the middle of the lip. It's just because that's where I decided to start. And this will add its own dimension. Hey, I just now touched that, that shadow that's over there. Now you're wondering, well, dude, what are you going to do about the gums? 
Okay, you don't have to just do a bunch of rainbows. Some of these touch where the lip meets the, the gums and teeth. So on this one, you can use these, these shadows on the edges to for your, your pilot holes. So you don't have to worry about having to drill a pilot hole there. But I, I could stop there or I could really hard to see the shadows in there, but I'm just going to start here. And of course the pen doesn't want to work. Now you could stop here and put a pilot hole right there in that little that little point if you don't want to have overkill of loop de loops, but I think you can get away with the loop de loops. Now we know a lot of people out there have some big big old gums and there's really no way to avoid that. <laughs> uh, so that's just, you know, it's just sad for whoever has the big gums and that's not, never mind. I'm trying to be too politically correct. Don't say that. I, I wasn't gonna say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any teeth so I can make fun of myself. <laughs> okay, so this, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that was where the pen line just didn't work or not, but there's, there's your gums there. And, uh, I was talking about the lines between the teeth. You can use those gum lines mm -hmm. to suggest those. You don't have to finish the line because if you did, that would obviously be a floater. And if you think that that gap between this shadow and that line are is too thin, don't bring it down as far. You are are in control of uh, what detail you add and what detail you don't. Now this right here might be a good enough fork that we we can add a pilot hole right there. And they do make small drill bits. Carl Taylor is a good one to go through to get those. Uh, but a one sixteenth, if you do it big enough, shouldn't. And it shouldn't be that bad anyway. But if you wanted to stop there, that's a single cut. And I'm going to go ahead and start this one from the gum or from the lip. And I'm going to have to stop just short of that other one or that, that gum will be a floater. Now, I talked about having to train myself to do simpler patterns. I might already be doing overkill on somebody's eyes because you can't please everybody, but uh, hopefully I haven't. But to me, this would be a simple pattern, and that's, that's just hoping everybody else agrees. <laughs> okay, now we've done the inside of the mouth. That's completely done, and I'll as soon as I do her lips and the, the jawline, I will lift it up and we'll get an idea because you won't have the photograph to compare it to unless I go back and forth like a cartoon. Now, obviously, you don't want to connect from here to here and go all the way over because that would make the upper lip a floater. So a lot of times, I will just start from one side. And in case you're wondering why I go back and forth, that's from years of drawing. It's just a habit. I don't. I, I almost always move my pen like I'm sketching, although I could technically just do that. But I stopped here, so this whole area is strong. It's connected by a light color here. It may translate funny, it may not. There's a little bit of strange shadow on her lower lip, but it's just the way the it looks. So I'm gonna go with what I see. If any, if I start to do anything that's off camera, let me know because I'm busy looking at the paper. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think pretty well centered. Now, generally, thank you. Uh, generally, when I start the lip on one side, on the upper lip, I will start the lip. The suggestion of the lower lip on the opposite side even though there's a little bit of a shadow here we're not going to really concern ourselves with it and you can even get away with bringing this line a little further over because you still got quite a bit of meat holding on but uh now we got a little bitty cut here so i'm just gonna start from here and the reason why i chose to start with a uh, features on people is because that's usually the most area people want to learn is portraiture. So that's why I'm, rather than doing a whole portrait, I wanted to do different features. Okay, real quickly, this side of her face will be the same side as this. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these just for the sake of connecting them. Because you have two options for a pilot hole. And the ear goes off the picture. And I'm not, y'all didn't tell me I wasn't in frame. Come on now. I didn't say that. I was looking. <laughs> <laughs> thought I was the only one. No, it's a little hairy because I, I, I sketch too much. I'm just, <laughs> just messing with you. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we can do the exact same thing on this side. Make, let me make sure it's in camera. There we go. I am going a little bit quick because I want to get more than one, more than a couple of features in here. 
there's light reflecting off of the side of her face. I believe that's called backlighting. And she is wearing an earring, so technically if you want to show that earring, you know, do that with a with, with a shadow or two or just a line, however you want to do it. Uh, a lot of what you're doing in scroll saw patterns, you're drawing the shadows or tracing the shadows because without the shadows, everything would look like a cartoon kind of, and sometimes they still do. But I'm just going to real quickly... Okay, even though you, you see shadow under here, under her chin, it, it's not definitive enough because it's kind of out of focus. So I'm just going to do like I did with the side of the nostril. I'm going to do a single line for her jawline and just make it slightly thicker in one spot. And you're not going to see every part of this. I could connect it here, but I'm not going to. But if you didn't want to add that thicker line, you could attach it to that other line. There's really no reason not to, but I'm a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the shape of the jaw is another feature that's unique to male and male or female or whatever the heck you identify as <laughs> so don't get me started anyway uh, so you could connect it to one of these sides but if you wanted to balance it out and have two spots that are sturdy enough for this not to fall out you just very slightly add maybe even thinner than that I'm just doing this kind of quick but that's where you could drill your pilot hole and, uh, okay, her neck doesn't show up a whole lot, but you can bring a line down here. You've already got that line here. Here's the shadow of her shirt collar. I'm just throwing that in real sloppily. And you can just barely see the edge of her collar. And I don't even see the collar over here, so I'm just going to make it up or just make it come off the neck here. And this pattern is done. And all I got, let me zoom out a little bit, and I will... I guarantee it's not going to look like that when you take the face out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? I'm not sure how to take that, Sparky. <laughs> but uh, but before I take before I take that that top sheet off, uh, focus on where you saw me trace. And if it looks funny, it's because it traced funny. I mean, if I went off the line, that's on me. As far as the bridge of the nose, I could have done something like this to suggest it, but you know. It's just whatever. But if it looks funny, that's on me. But let me lift up the paper. And I think this is a relatively simple pattern, in my opinion. If, if I'm wrong, uh, y'all can tell me in the chat. Does that look like something you would consider an easy pattern, excluding yep. all the scribbles? Okay. Now, again, as Russ said, you can eliminate all this. You could, okay, just for the sake of doing it, I'll do it on the, on the paper. You can... Uh, make the lip up a little bit bigger or something. Or you just connect all those lines we made teeth if, if you think it looks funny and you want to eliminate those lower teeth, connect all that or at least up to a certain point and then shade it in. I mean, shading it in is to remind yourself because when you make a pattern, it's, it's either white or it's not. Oh, I, okay, that would mean I'd have to connect these teeth. Yeah. It could make a floater, I don't know, because I'm not paying attention, but that's how you could eliminate the lower teeth, you know. I think that looks better. Okay, Thank good. You. Then I'm, I'm glad both of y'all brought that brought that up. So now it may look a little funny, but I'm gonna go back back and forth a couple times. So, dude, that looks kind of. There's times I've had to show uh, what's the word when you put a picture on top of a superimposed. Mm -hmm. There's times I've had to show a pattern superimposed on a photograph when somebody said that nose is crooked, and I'll show them that line matches right up with the side of that nose. <laughs> That's pretty good likeness right there. Thank you. So that, yeah. that, to me, that's a simple pattern. So I think we can get away with not having to do this one in steps. But I'm going to very quickly, the next one I'm going to do is an eye, unless there's another feature of people that somebody would like to see more. Eyes. Okay, good idea. Yeah. Would you like to be a single eye or two eyes? No, mine only have one page printed out, and it's two eyes. So <laughs> that kind of eliminated a... Uh, Eliminated. Uh, is there any questions or comments? Uh, Y'all have been keeping up with them, so they're probably not. But, oh, I hit the camera again. No, there's no questions out there. Uh, Florence just wondered if it was going to be on your YouTube channel, and I told her it would be. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 there was one time I did one of a baby, but I uh, selfishly I deleted that video because I wanted to get the DVD sold, and that was kind of arrogant of me. So that's on me. 
but this one will stay for the life of the channel. Uh, real quickly, now, Charles. Have... Most people, most people that do the the yes, sir. Computer, they don't just draw them on. Yeah, a lot of well, most people that do portraits do it with contrast and and brightness on their computers, and I haven't done that, so I don't know how to teach people that. I've always come on paper because I can control a pen in my hand than I, more than I can a mouse or a stylus. Well, the, the reason being is is when once you scan this in, you usually fill so that you can actually see if there's any floaters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, that, I get, so, that, that could be a future show, actually, because for people that, you know, if they get start comfortable doing it the way I do it, then, then they will see how to look for floaters. Uh, I you know, if there's if there's time in the show, I guess I could show that. But uh, I believe one of the people in the chat is somebody I was uh, actually it was Thea, Theodore Bazelli. I think they call him Buzz or Ted or I don't remember what they call him. But uh, I was trying to assist a guy on what to look for in patterns, and Theodore Bazelli mentioned the flood fill with a completely contrasting color, and you will see where the floaters are they will appear white while everything else is colored whatever color you chose to fill it with if that makes no sense then i apologize <laughs> okay real quickly uh now since a majority of people out there like simple patterns uh my goal on this next one is to treat it like the eye is dark although it is a brown eye uh you could still see light. I thought you were going to come out with Mike Wiskowski. He only has one eye and he's round. I have no, I, I have no idea who that is. But. From Monsters uh, Inc. Monsters oh, Inc. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to concentrate on this eye. If y'all want me to go to this one, we can, but it's slightly out of focus. Uh, okay, I got to put that item back on there. And it won't move. Oh, I can usually get away with using painter's tape twice. After that, it loses a lot of its tackiness, and there's no guarantee things will stay in place. But the reason why I'm not taping all the way around, like you'll see in my downloadable uh, videos, is because I want to be able to do the lifting up like I did before. Okay, Even, although you can see some light, now I'm not talking about the, the reflective light. Uh, actually, that's... <laughs> going to be tricky to do because most of that pupil is behind the reflection in the eye, although you can see the pupil. But that would look funny, drawing that pupil in dark and then having that light go around it. That would look kind of funny. And I need to stop getting so close to the camera because it goes out of focus. It sure did. Well, it didn't that time because I was trying. But we're going to treat this like a completely dark eyeball. That right there is the only light you will see. And I know that is very thin right there. But since you, you right there, you're in control of this pattern. So you make this line thicker. Now, I know those that want to see detail uh, <laughs> would want me to do it exactly as I see it, but anybody with brown eyes generally, the easiest thing for most people to do on eyes is to cut, a, cut the uh, iris completely out, iris being the colored part of the eye. So you're not going to see a separation between that, that pupil and the iris because we're going to make the whole eye dark. And... If you're looking closely, I know you can see light reflections of the eyelash here, but that's that's too complex uh, for, for trying to make it a simple pattern. And where the eyeball meets the eyelashes, I may have a small line separating them, or I could get away with attaching it. See, I'm changing my mind on, on the air. So I'm going to treat this like it's not eyelash. Eyelashes come down there. You may not be able to see my pen lines because I cannot always get them to work on printer paper. I'm just simply tracing the reflection on the eye, and we got lucky because it, by default, it was attached to the white area, which automatically keeps it from being a floater. And I didn't really make it that much thicker than it is. There's only a little bit that I didn't trace. So this will actually go relatively quick. Uh, believe it or not, the hardest part of this whole thing is the eyebrows and the eyelashes. Can anybody guess why, either in the comment or on the panel? Because they're little bitty hairs. Not so much that. It's a little more specific. And I'm not, that doesn't make anybody stupid that doesn't know that Cause, answer. Because there's lots of little bitty hairs. <laughs> <laughs> that too, okay. Uh, they curved? No. Uh, okay, I, 
I'll explain here in a second. I probably, <laughs> I just wondered if anybody might know. Uh, but those are good guesses. But the little bitty hairs technically are just like a single pin line. So, I mean, that actually makes it easier in a way. But overlapping hairs is what can be a problem because you don't want little bitty floaters. Does that make any sense? Yep. Uh, like, let me get as close as I can. In fact, Harnell Media just said overlapping hairs. Yeah, you see a bunch of overlapping hairs in here. There's a, any light area would be a floater. So you sort of got to invent your own stuff here. So that is why this and the eyebrows can be a little hard. But since we're going for simple, uh, we don't have to do every individual hair on that eyebrow. That would take forever. So we're gonna, uh, I vowed to work on simpler patterns and show people simpler patterns. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's may, except for maybe towards the end, since that's where the the average is, the average woman's eyebrow gets a little more shaped. Uh, I, I'm going to ignore a lot of the the jutting hairs up here because I'm afraid that might translate funny. But anyway, okay, we've already tra traced the uh, the eyeball, and it won't it won't look all that sexy yet because all that's all I've traced. But I'm going to show you for the sake of showing you. That's our eyeball. Yeah, I probably it was probably too early to show, but I'm going to go ahead and I could have sworn I traced the top of that, but apparently I did not. All right. So I'm going to trace the top of that, and we will have a completed iris. And no, I'm not going to trace the top of that. See, it's that decision making I was telling you. It's going into the eyelashes, so I'm going to make it go into the eyelashes. We'll trace where the the iris goes into the eyelash, and that happens here and here. And then we'll just go straight into the eyelashes. Oops, I hope that didn't make a smudge, but if it did, we'll lift. Okay. Uh, now this, this drooping eyebrow gets a little close to the iris, so if you don't like that, go slightly higher. I don't have it taped on all sides, so this is trying to move on me. But it, right here is where I'm talking about in case I was covering it before. Do I need to zoom back in? No, you're good. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to bring this this line slightly higher up. Not a whole lot higher up because it would look kind of deformed. But I'm just going along the bottom line of where those eyelashes are, and there's a break in it there, so I'm going to use that to suggest realism. And y'all are welcome to interrupt me at any time if anybody has a comment or a question. Uh, now that's the last really dark eyebrow. So I'm going to start a new section right here, and you see where the Damn it. I mean, darn it. No, screw it. Y'all are adults. You can handle damn it. Uh, <laughs> you see where this cluster comes together? That adds a dark spot where you could add the uh, hollow hole. I actually made that slightly thicker than it is. And you don't have to trace every single hair, but hair because uh, the suggestion of detail is just as good as detail sometimes. And I need to practice what I preach because of all the detail I add. That went a little thick, too, because I'm going so quick, but both of those, that was just two forks. And all those are the little ones in there. I could probably add one little more. One little, one more little line. <laughs> okay, I blame somebody on the panel that as to why I can't talk. Uh, okay, so we, yes. Just a little bit, because on our screen, you, I could see on the YouTube one, you're a little further away for some reason. I don't understand why. Not the problem. That is okay. Well, yeah, we got plenty of room. I can zoom in. Okay, good. Okay, That's that is that is that is full zoom capacity. And I I apologize. I don't have some kind of fluorescent pen that shows you every line I do. That's what I'm hoping you're able to see as I go. And I know sometimes with laser paper and ink, light can reflect off of it. So I know this looks a little light right here, but it's actually pretty dark. And that's another thing I didn't stop and take in mind when I was working on this is that shadow of the eye. Dag blab it. Now that's where I would ha I would have to edit it on the computer, because this right here would be a floater, and that right there would be a floater, because that's two dark lines on the either side of the light area. Although I did not connect here, some people would consider that too brittle, and it wouldn't be simple. But uh, crap. Uh, I may just suggest that line and suggest the other one rather than darken it in. It could have gone either way, but I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy. Tracing eyelashes. So, we trace this one up to here, and we went to there. 
This one can probably go in further. Tear duct. Dag nabbit, I wish this pen would stay working so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, it's not showing every line I'm drawing, but y'all can see my, my, where my pen is going. Does that suggest the tear duct? Then I don't want to do overkill on shadows there. Oh, I really wish I had taken in mind what was happening there. Uh, okay. Oh, it's starting to go out of frame, too. All righty, then. Uh, okay, so I traced the bottom of that. And, God, I wish I had taken in mind that. So I'm just going to stop this just short. And because I'm in dark ink, it's going to really have trouble with the pen. So that just suggests that shadow there. And I'm just going to come all the way across. My... I'm creating a shadow on my own picture here. Okay, this is this is more of a makeup shadow, so I'm just going to suggest the wrinkle if the pen will work. Okay, just taking, just believe me that the pen's working. It's just not showing up. Yeah, it's just printer paper, or what you call it. Uh, and after I trace a few more eyelashes, I'll draw, I'll bring this back up uh, so you can see what it looks like. Now we went up to here. Now this is really kind of a, a cluster of eyebrows. You just got to be careful not to overlap any lines. And you can be really sloppy with it because nobody's going to say, hey, that's not what my eyelashes look like. As long as you give the general shape of those eyebrows. Uh, I'll keep saying eyebrows. I'm in eyelashes. Thank you all for correcting me. Just messing with you. Anyway, I stopped that one there so I could have a new cut starting over here. And I'm getting my own hand in the in the way. Let me turn it around, see if that helps any. And I don't know where I left off, so I can look for the reflection of the light on the ink. Okay. Right there. Right there. <laughs> and there's there's not a whole lot going on over here. Some weird shapes. And we got this one one eyelash going there, so we'll use that makeup line to Go into there, and that might end up looking sloppy, and I'll totally delete it. Now, uh, now, yes, the, there's lower eyelashes here, but the bottom of the eye, lit, the lower eyelid, is right here. You could you could barely see it because I could barely see it in the photograph. But you can suggest it either from a shadow over here, or from the dark part of the iris. If I can get my pen work, <laughs> the pen works better on lighter colors. I'm not going to go all the way to here because that would probably fall apart, but I'll get really close because we have enough breaks in the eyelashes. But that suggests the lower eyelid. I mean, they, uh, your mind will finish the rest of the eyes. Uh, uh, lines. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking too many th things at once here. Anyway, now I said I was going to suggest lines through here, so I'm just going to occasionally add a little, and I may edit that on the computer as well. But I think y'all would rather see the... Uh, paper portion than the computer portion. I feel safe in assuming that. And I almost always find mistakes I've made when when I get, get to the editing, editing process. Well, by the time you scan them in the computer, like you said, that's probably a whole other show. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm just very generically tracing these. There's not really much of a science to it. I'm just Rather than making them crisscross, I'm making the eyelashes slightly thicker. But I am following the same direction that the eyelashes are going to to make it look like the picture. Now, this one's slightly thick, and the next one's thin, so I'm just going to connect them a little bit. Even though it's not what it looks like, but people don't look at stuff like that as to how much of a... Now, it's okay that those crossed over because you have a pilot hole here. As long as this one doesn't create a floater, I'll just... Pretend that little one going down there is not there. And your pilot hole would be in there, and I think I already did this whole cluster here. And we'll just throw in these little ones here. Am I still on the camera? Yes, I am. Okay. Yep, yeah, you're still there. You're good. Because I caught myself when I was doing the DVD. I kept going out of frame. Uh, some, some weird shapes, but we're going to go with it. And I know I'm going a little faster than I normally would, but it's because I want to cover a lot of areas. And I know I've already said that. Now, you see the... Oops, I, I bumped the camera crane. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but do you see the the very fine wrinkles there? Yes. Yeah. 
you can get away with ignoring them, but I'm going to suggest at least one of them because it is part of this lady's eye. Um, yes. Al Forte said that uh, it looks like when you shrink it down, it will all become one piece of cut on the eyelashes. Uh, Don't and, you shrink it down. I, I actually I scan them in at 300 DPI, so I tend to do large pictures, so that's a, a bad habit I have. So even even what I'm showing y'all today, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to simplify at some point because I might not be being, being simple enough. But I realized because it's a big gap in there, I should probably add a couple more eyelashes. Just even though they're not there, I just want to add some dimension in there. And I'm only gonna do one line as long as I don't go across two lines here. There won't be a floater, so I'll just start one here, go like that, and stop. It just suggests that there's a line on her face and I know there's a big shadow here but that was gonna be the overkill I was telling you about got the bridge of her nose here we can suggest it was something as simple as that uh, the eyebrow I'm gonna shape it slightly less because it's so hairy in this area and there the only part I'm going to make sure I'm in camera I'm gonna trace some of these but then I'm just gonna do the general shape God, I wish a pen would work. It would be so much more effective. It's not working real well, so. Some of this will be just as much a surprise to me as it is to you. <laughs> because I can't see my pen lines going down. And you, you don't have to be, as long as you get the general shape of that eyebrow, you don't have to be precise with that either. Because people have seen enough eyes that they know there's eyebrows above them, and I got to look where my last ink line was, right here. So I'm just going to generalize here because we're going for a simplified pattern. I'm not going to do all those individual hairs because it would probably look like Chewbacca in the end. <laughs> I mean, occasionally you can go off the one to show the contour, the way the 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 hairs are going, the direction they're going in. This is probably still going to look too hairy. I probably should have just done a generic tracing. But, not looking at that eye yet, or we probably don't even have to. We're about to see how good or bad this turned out. Oh, I forgot some eyelashes. Y'all didn't tell me that. I forgot some in here. I could have sworn I traced these. Somebody's. I know I peeked before y'all got to see, but it's a relatively simple eye, in my opinion. That's too complex, y'all tell me. And, no. okay, we wanted that to be a cutout. And I thought I traced the other side. I didn't. The, the eyelashes here. Say, that you're missing a little bit. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, glad it, see, that's what I mean by making mistakes in real time. Okay, I'm going to start right here. And go right into that line that I traced there. I'm just going to very quickly throw these in here. Now, you'll notice some of these eyelashes go up to that, that ridge. You're going to have to stop short of that, or you're going to have a bunch of little floaters in there. Where did I stop? There I stopped. Okay. Now, if some of that is not translated well, it's because it's not colored in. That's That, that would be the benefit of seeing it on a computer, but I'm going to very quickly shade in that, so it will give a little more realism. Just to give you a brief idea. That's why I color them in for selling online, so you can you can see uh, more of what it would look like because the eye likes contrast, and that's not to be ironic. I mean, you know, when you're looking at a pattern, you want to see the contrast. It's easier to translate, and I know you can picture that colored in very sloppily. But uh, does that look like a simple eye, or is it that I still do overkill on the uh, eyelashes? I don't think I translated well with that dark shadow over here, but you can eliminate those lines there. What, I think it looks pretty good. Is that something? Looks fine. Is that something one of y'all would cut as a simple pattern? If I needed a pattern for just one eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now the next one I'm going to move on. To, I may choose a different one because I think. We, is there any any other people features anybody wants to see? If you say hair, we're screwed because that'll take the whole setup. But some people do like, then again, I'm going for simple. So some people do want to know how to do hair. I think some of you will recognize the person. I will just, yeah, that's all I'll do is the hair. Okay. Moving that out of the way. 
Any any more questions or comments? Is there anybody that's really interested in saying a closed mouth? Because it's pretty much the same idea. Dave Gatton wants to know why would you draw the rectangular reflection on the eye instead of drawing a pupil? Because the reflection is what makes it look more realistic, and I'm into I'm into realism. But that being said, let me bring it down here. For for the sake of Dave, some people may not give a crap about realism, and that's not to say Dave doesn't. But yeah, if you want to just have that that iris in there, you do that. But this is uh, anything I shaded, Dave was going to be cut out, so they had to have some kind of realism in there. Was that reflection of the eye? Well, I think what he's but, talking about instead of a square, why didn't you put a circle? Because uh, I was drawing what I saw. It, it was a square. Oh, okay. And I mean, that's not something I edited in there. That that's a actual uh, uh, reflection of light off the eyeball. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic in answering that, but I hope that answers Dave's question. But 99% of that pupil was hidden, and it's a dark eye to begin with, so that's why I chose to do it. But I guess I didn't need to shade that in, so I apologize. But y'all got to see it before that. So I'm, I feel pretty safe that I don't need to do this. Because so, y'all sort of so, got the So you're saying eight eyes, you would keep the pupil. Yeah, I should. Right? And then the iris would be cut out? Uh, well, if you cut. No, no, no. The iris would stay and the pupil would cut out. Okay, let me do a real quick uh, drawing example. That's a good question because. Light eyes, it's a gamble. It really is. Okay, God, I can't do it near, near as detailed as I ordinarily would. But some people, if people have almost any eye color, you can get away. Now, picture like that light area is still there. Almost any eye color, you can get away with cutting it completely, the iris completely out. The only time I don't is when people have piercingly blue eyes. And I'll just try to do a real quick generic example. You know that dark rim you see around some people's eyes? Uh, and it, it really only has, if they have really bright eyes, because a lot of times it just doesn't translate well. And I'll, you, even if you're doing a pupil and you don't see light, if you're wanting to draw it from your head, you just do like this. That's you're, off, you're off camera, Charles. I knew that. I knew that. I totally was testing out. Where am I? Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> this is a weird angle of an eyeball, but this is the, the pupil right here. And I just added that little mo that circle cut out to suggest that there's light shining off of it because I don't have a, a drawing here to work with. And uh, maybe you would add some lines. I forget what these lines are called, but they're they come from the edges of the eyeball. And the reason why I'm not making that a complete circle, number one, it would be a floater. Uh, I'm 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 doing this next to this, so maybe you can get an idea of how I would have treated a light colored eye. Versus a uh, yeah that, that <clears throat> what was that? So you said, yeah, cut that, out that part makes of more the, sense. Yeah, you cut out part of the pupil, but yet leave enough of it to show a reflection. And yeah, if the if the reflection's there, I mean, I I did that because I was inventing it out of my head, but uh, uh, but I'm trying to get an idea of. Now you can go all the way across with a lower eyelid, as long as you don't go all the way across with the upper eyelid. Otherwise, this whole thing would fall out. Uh, you could sort of break that up, but I don't have a picture to show you. I, I was too busy looking for different features that I didn't stop and think about the difference between light and dark eyes. But I hope, no matter how old this show is, you can ask me in the comments or on private email, whatever you want, about how to handle certain things. But that's on me for not having an example of a light-colored eye. Uh, but I was trying to cover different things all in one show. And I know since I did the mouth smiling, that's why I'm, I'm skipping this one for now. Because I can move on to something other than people. Well, does anybody is anybody interested in hair on a person? If not, I won't be offended. I can find another topic. Hair is good. It's, it's okay. hard to do. Yeah, and this one has a lot of y'all will recognize this as one of my most detailed patterns. Let me zoom out. This is Daenerys Targaryen <laughs> from Game of Thrones. That is one of my most uh, detailed patterns so far. Now, imagine trying to pick it. Now, I, this is one of the ones, if you go to my simplified patterns folder on woodenvisions.com, you will see I tried to, and I'm using, okay, 
I, 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 I'm using a term uh, Sterling Davis used on a show once, dumbing it down. That does not mean I think that a beginner or somebody that likes simple designs are dumb. That's not what I mean. It's just a generic way of saying making it simpler. But can you see what I had to deal with in figuring out how the heck to make that simpler but still suggest the shape of the hair? That's why <laughs> hair is a pain in the pie, too. Deep. Now, the color of the hair, uh, the color of her hair makes the majority of this simple because there's almost no shadows in there. But when you're doing light colored hair, 99% of the detail is the shadows because that's what makes the hair. But she has such a complex hairdo, there's no way for me to simplify that much more than I did in that simple folder. So, uh, not to tease y'all, but in order to see a somewhat simpler version, uh, who was it that told me the other day? Uh, oh, it was Rick Hutchison. He told me, some, although I tried to make some simpler, if there's if there's lines too close together, uh, let me draw it. Let's say I have a cutout here and a cutout here. That looks like a simple cutting, but some people might think those two cutouts are too close together. So those are things I'm having to train my brain to do, is make thicker areas between cuts. So that's why it's probably best for y'all if I don't try to simplify this very, very, very detailed hair. I don't so, think you can. I mean, uh, to simplify uh, well, and keep that uh, looking right. Yeah, uh, if one of y'all is able to post a link, if you go to the simplified folder and find this this design simplified, you're welcome to post a link, uh, and you'll see the the best I thought I could do with simplifying it. I mean, I'm sure if I tried harder, I might, but I was trying to welcome back, Paul. I was trying to suggest where everything was without drawing every last hair, but the the detailed version shows almost every thing you see here. <laughs> so. The, I don't even know why I brought that one out, but that's an example of what hair can look like. But if you want to see the simplified version. Okay. Another one people brought up a lot. How many viewers we have just for giggles? We have, let's see. 34. No, that's not bad at all. Uh, a lot of people right want now. to. Okay, I have, I, I have a... A horse, a landscape. Why well, don't I show you these? That way you can pick between them. I'll let y'all choose because I have a whole bunch here. Simple horse. Silhouette with a reflection. A lot of people want to know about trees, but they're not as easy as they look. Different kind of horse. Lighter colored horse. Uh, watch your jigger. You know what a what a jigger is, but anyway, a dog and an elderly man. Which one would y'all like to do next? I figure if y'all are voting, then more people will be interested in what I'm showing. I can go through the list again if you want me to. We have the elderly man. We have a relatively simple dog, short-haired dog. We have this coyote or wolf, whatever that is. I can't really tell right off the hand. We have a light-colored horse. We have a tree. We have a silhouette with reflection. We have a, same, a little old horsey. Is there any kind of consensus going on? Um, Mark Lindsay said the dog. Jim Bashir said wolf. Oh, uh, wow. Al Forte said the whatchamajigger. <laughs> That would be the silhouette. One. Katie Dotson says the dog looks simple. And uh, Dave Hart says puppy, and Dave Gatton says wolf. All right, so that's three wolves. Uh, oh, really? We got three I, wolves. I, I, I thought it was a tie on the on this one and the and the wolf. It is. Okay, oh, we so. just got another wolf. Wolf. Oh, all right, oh. you you wolf. Well, and it's funny that y'all did that because believe it or not, believe it. Or, <laughs> Believe it or not, one of the most requested things I've had of a DVD I hadn't done yet was landscapes. That's why I'm surprised nobody picked that. But yeah, that makes it easier on me because that's a lot of crap to do. Okay. So we have. Yeah, just leave that be. Yeah, we got the wolf and the puppy. I don't know if it's puppy or not, but uh, we always have the future. I can do stuff like uh, that tree and things like this. So I wouldn't do the whole thing, but those are two I had set aside to show how to to show how to do water and how to do 
trees and or mountains and reflections. And that was another reason why I had that silhouette here. Because the silhouette would make it simple. Good lordy, I bumped it again. I gotta reach it. Uh, the silhouette would be relatively simple, but the this here would be never mind. So Javi said he wants to see a wolf on a horse with a dog's head. Okay, you draw that up and I'll make a pattern out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a silhouette. Thank you for watching, Javi. Okay. Hey, okay, I guess, well, okay. It's, now we got to break the tie. I'll tell you right now, this one will go quicker. Do it. All right. Now, although this has a dark background, me being Mr. Detail, I will, I will treat it like it has a light background. I'm not going to trace every little single hair because that's the way that usual me would be. And I wish the light was not reflecting off of this paper. I will zoom in here shortly. <sighs> okay. Wow, we've already got over an hour, but that's, that's fine. As long as y'all are willing to watch, I'm willing to do. Okay. I can't believe how quickly that time passed. I thought I was going pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, no, no more questions in the, the old chat there. Dave Gatton says he's got the night free do them all. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't stay for them all. Me neither. Oh, leave it to Dave. I got I got I got to gotta get my hobbies wood shops uh, almost 30, 30 day almost impossible challenge. Well, you can definitely I gotta put get that my off. day in. You can, you can definitely put that off. I'm kidding. Javi, Javier Honsueda is doing a almost impossible 30-day challenge for the month of November. Uh, the month of December, Dave Jones, Portal Woodworks, is doing a bandsaw box competition or challenge, and he will give you more details the closer it gets to December. Uh, I might be forgetting somebody somewhere because I'm thinking too much. I'm trying to get everything done. Well. While, while you're thinking, I want to wish Chad Grossclaws and his wife a happy 19th anniversary. Oh, absolutely. Chad and wife, I don't know your wife's name, but happy anniversary, y'all. Love is a, is a wonderful thing, and I probably don't have to tell you that since you've been married for 19 years. I'm only at five, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Okay. In the chat is where I posted the... Uh the simplified version of oh, thank you sir so the chat the link did work it, it allowed you to post the link yeah let me let me do it i think on my screen yeah. it's there yeah, yeah for, for some reason moderators can do it i don't know if the regular person can and uh there is no favoritism on moderators i just get as many people as i can and for moderators because there was a time i had uber trolls going on uh, okay, so I'm going to do this as quickly and as simply as possible, the key being simply. Okay, I need to zoom in. I wish I, wish I could say this video was brought to you by Marlboro and Dr. Pepper, but they don't love me enough. But I'm very happy to have Harnell Media as my sponsor. Bye, golly. Okay, that is zoomed all the way in. Two. Two more dogs that might pedigree might come after you. Hey. Sponsor oh. you. Hey, real quickly, I can grab a speaking of Dr. Pepper, I gotta grab one. Kibbles and bits. And bits and bits and bits. <laughs> hey guys. Sorry, I'm trying to reach for a can of Dr. Pepper because they ran out of bottles, so you just gonna sound like a beer commercial. Bush. That's refreshing, Bob. At least I got a half a chuckle out of somebody for sympathy. Oh, Dave, stop bumping the camera, dang it, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, Russ. I'm sorry I don't get you on the panel more often. Because uh, that would be responsible. And that's not. Sorry. Okay. I think my looks like a man. Yep. What? I'm taking my looks like a man. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, you're taking it. Okay. Uh. I, I thought he was making a pun because you had a dog on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I thought you said I'm taking my. I thought you said I'm taking my looks like a man, like it was a tie into a Aerosmith song. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, now I know y'all can see dark and light there. 
but if we're going for a simplified pattern, all I'm going to, well, I have to add some of that light to get the, and this is a reflection off of the eyes. And you can have to take my word for it that the pen lines are going down because I can't see them. I am just doing one side and then the other side, adding some thickness there, and I'm going to run that white line right into the line under here that shows light. So that way this will all be one st sturdy area. Uh, trying to figure out how I want to do this. As I say on my DVDs, when you see me sitting still and quiet, it's because I'm thinking. <laughs> you might also see smoke. And that's not cigarette smoke. Stop going there. Okay, I'm just going to do the eyelashes there. This right here is a is a completed cut inside there. Uh, so i got to figure out how I want to do this. But I'm going to go on the outside of there and ignore the fact that there's a little bit of light between there and the hair. It's because of my fan that this thing is waving a little bit. I apologize if anybody vomits. So I'm just going to very generically suggest those. But since I'm using that light down there, I am going to separate that a little bit. Because that's helping stabilize the eye. But I may decide later that I could have gotten away with just, just the light here. Matter of fact, I probably could. But since that light's there, we're going to use it. I just wish I could get my stupid pen to work. I always start with the, uh, the face of an animal or a person. And there's a little bitty cuts here, but since we're wanting to be simple, I'm going to make it all one cut and just make a couple hairs come off of it to show the contour. Now, when you're doing things like hair, you don't have to draw every single hair, but you do want to draw the hairs in the direction that they are going because it's... Ugh. And I'm just stepping all over my own tongue tonight. But it, uh, you saw me start going upwards here, and then the further back I got, I started laying the lines down. That's because that's the way the hairs are going. And when you do even a few hairs going a certain direction, that is suggesting the shape. And that's what I mean by contour. And to make this a separate cut here, probably go right into light it's taking everything I have not to trace every hair I see but that would take way too long uh, now this is a distinct enough shadow I think I can include that so I'm just gonna very roughly do that it's another thing you don't have to trace every individual hair but pay attention to the direction those hairs are going now, I may decide later this this line looks stupid because some things don't translate well So, I mean, that's that's that shadow. I could have left that out if we're looking for simple, but I'm not very consistent, am I? Anyway, now, although that's a skinny whisker, again, you are in control of the... Oh, hey, hey, Jamie. Uh, although that is a skinny whisker, uh, you can make that as thick as you want. I mean, because you're, you're in control of the pattern. Uh then that's a hair in the dark area. Now, since I said I was going to treat it like I had a white white background, I'm just going to make a simple line there. You know, I'm not going to try to draw on all, on both sides of it like on some of my more detailed patterns. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make it thicker for the sake of going simpler. And I'm just sort of roughing in these things, just so, somewhat paying attention to the lines. But the mo most of the hairs around the dog's uh, mouth are pretty short. And where these whiskers are, I'm going slightly above the mouth and slightly below, but not so thin that this jaw falls off. And I may have gone too thick on the thickness of thickness of that whisker, but you're getting the idea. I'm trying to do as many of the whiskers as I see, but still making it simple. Now that's too small of an area right there. I'm going to hold it up close. If we're going for simple, if I tried to trace that area right there, that would be that would be too brittle. So we're going for simple, so we're going to ignore the fact that there's two crossing hairs there. Except for down here, we can get away with just throwing one there and, and one or two here. So I'm going to pretend that's just a whisk, one whisker going there. Am I still on? God, I hate the reflection. You're good. Okay, I'm going to try to do it like this. <laughs> That'll add to my own problems. Okay. So we got two thick whiskers going through there. 
although it gets lighter here, it is still darker than everything around it. So we're doing that. So the mouth is basically done, and I didn't follow my own rule about suggesting those whiskers above and below the mouth. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to do these hairs here, just throwing them in as if it had a light background. And y'all going to have to bear with me on this because I know it. there's light reflecting off the ink. And I said I was going to treat it like I had a, a, a background, but I'm not making individual hairs. I'm finding myself tracing them. And I need to stop doing that, so I'm just going to start making lines. With, with <laughs> Although I'm trying to teach you all these things, I'm having to learn lessons as I'm going. And I know I've already said this, but you've already seen me go back into my old habits. You see me, I started tracing those hairs instead of just making single lines. So I'm going to have to fix that in the editing process. <laughs> And these are another thing that aren't identify, identifiable to an animal. You could even get away with leaving those hairs out if you wanted to, because the majority of the focus of this picture is the dog, obviously. And I know the hairs are part of the dog. I was going to ask, that? Would, you, uh, would you leave some of them off, or would you would you not put them on there at all? I, I sloppily put them in there, but in hindsight, I could have left them completely off. It, uh, there again, I'm so into realism, it's hard for me not to look or think of those things. But yeah, you can completely leave those things off, and it'll still look like a dog because it's... Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's, uh, that's a dog, and we all know that because most of us know what a dog looks like. So yes, I could have left those out. I, and that's in hindsight because I'm so used to freaking detail. But anyway, <laughs> we, we did this line here. <laughs> And I'm only going to do one or two little shapes here to shit to, because there's a bone right here above the dog's eye. It's a brow bone, I guess that's what you call it. But yeah, just one or two or three or four <laughs> lines. And that suggests the shape and the, the fact that there's a brow there. And you see that little tuft of hair here? And I'm rushing much quicker than I usually go. But you get the general shape of where those are going. And you're following the contour of those. So you can see they sort of went like almost like a fan. But that adds the dimension, but uh, I guess it would be, I can't, I'm sitting here pointing at my forehead and you can't see me. That little ridge between your eyes. Anyway, <laughs> now this is a detail line. It's not, it's not a, a feature. It's more of a discoloration, but I'm just going to throw it in there. Because there again, I'm seeing it. And I, now this is a dog that has dark and light nose. So this is going to help stand out except for the fact that it's a light background. It, it's hard for me to imagine a light background when there's not one there. Why am I talking 90 miles an hour, Russ? I blame that on you. I really have no clue. Because <laughs> I'm trying to get these done so quick, I'm talking too dang quick. People are going to have to slow the video down to hear what I'm saying. Now, basically, I just roughly uh, trace the shadow. And if you need me to zoom back in, let me know. But I suggested where that, that uh, back of that nostril goes back. Yeah, I need to zoom in. I feel like I do. And no, there is no way in heck I'm going to trace every little detail around those hairs. So we're going to suggest those as well. So you're in luck. Uh, so that shadow went from here all the way to back to here. That's just suggesting the shadow in there. So I'm going to break it up right here. And break it up just below the nostril. We'll start the nostril. Stop talking so fast, Charlie. Actually, I don't think I'm talking too fast. I'm giving myself too much crap. But anyways, this will all make sense when I pull the paper up. I, I would have had a tendency to, to, to do the whole thing. And I, I see I probably shouldn't have. But where you started the... Uh, the first part of that nose in the back where it's darker. Uh -huh. I would have had a tendency to, to make that the whole thing, and, and uh, it would have been wrong. You mean the nose? Yeah, the nose and that back part together. As well, well, yeah. Well, because the average yeah. person sees a dog's nose as black. I think there's a lot yeah. of sunshine. It might have light on it anyway, but mm -hmm. I think this is either a light-colored nose or a bright, bright, bright sunshine. Yeah, the sunshine, I think. Uh, now, and, and speaking of... Con combining I could probably get away with combining some of these shadows in here for that simplistic effect instead of having to break it all up mm -hmm. and I forgot one thing 
and for those that didn't know, no, out of frame, for those that didn't notice while I was talking, I connected this shadow and did one single line up to about there to suggest the shape of the front of the nose. You did. But I also forgot to suggest that separation between the left and right side of the dog's snout. And so you shadow. wouldn't completely cut off that area behind the nose there where it's dark? Here I would. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I hear I wouldn't because I'm I'm trying to be true to the picture now. Uh, yeah, that's the only reason for that. Now, I know you you see all these little divots where there is no science to that. You don't have to, you know, have a perfect shape because nobody's going to notice that. You just scribble out little. Uh, pay attention to the direction the hairs are going, but that's the extent of it. You don't have to trace the exact shape. And there's a little more shadow under here, so I am going to show a couple of whiskers. And for those of you that can't do it like this, Charles has a website for you. By God, wouldn't be. Thank you for the plug. How you yes. doing, Jamie? Talk to me, baby. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm That's doing good. good. Just watched uh, Cole Jacobson on his uh, Twitch Thanks. stream. Yes, I heard about that. I was just preparing for the show, and I suck at multitasking. Okay, a little more there. Now, hey, Russ, I'm going to leave, uh, Charlie. Okay. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Be good. Okay, kid, you shouldn't smoke, but since my cigarette rolled into the camera, you saw it. Now, y'all probably noticed this darkness of hair going here. Yeah. Uh, because it's part of the structure of the muscle through here, I may go ahead and at least suggest it. And I know that's asking a lot to try to guess what the muscle structure of an animal is. But I, to me, that's what that's suggesting. So I didn't take a whole lot of time on it. And it may translate to look funny. And there's some in here too, but I'm going to ignore those because they're going for simple. Now we're going to, let me check my work here. Now, if you want to suggest the directions that those whiskers are going one or two lines coming off of off those dark spots you just did you can make it shorter as long as you want and there's your suggestion of detail your, your mind will finish what it's saying especially the closer you get to uh, probably got a little too close there for a simple but anyway I think you get the idea that we got the direction of the whiskers down. So this little saggy part up under there is all shadow and hair. So I'm just going to follow the contour of the hair, but not worry about the shape so much. Oh, I wish this had a light background so I could stop pretending it does. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to very roughly, you don't have to match this unless you're trying to match a portrait. And it, yes, I really am trying to go quickly so I can get more things done, but I know y'all understand both sides of it. But, uh, okay, so we got that, that we got the neck. We haven't done anything on the air. And I got to keep making sure that I am uh, in frame. No mo no questions or comments or? I don't know, Paul left. Oh, is there nobody here that's, <laughs> I think Mike or Mike has access to the chat. No, there ain't no questions. They're just carrying no, on no between questions. themselves. No questions. Uh -huh. All right, thank you. Now, there's no real science to what I'm doing here. I'm just drawing it because it's there. Ordinarily, this would look like kind of a funny shadow to me, but it, it's the way his hair is working before you get to his ear. And I'm trying to make this as few cuts as possible. That's why I'm connecting all these areas. And we got a break right there, so because of hair contour now i i got a kind of a question on that because i know you use uh spiral blades yes sir uh, would that be something that's more suited uh, with the way those are would that be more suited to straight or would you just go ahead and continue using the uh, spiral blades on that well i only it's up there and like that you know that's what i'm asking for well, that's probably one of the reasons why so many people want me to do simpler patterns because straight blades are so 
or flat blades are so common mm -hmm. but <laughs> I think it's subconscious when I make an uber detailed picture that I'm gonna use a spiral blade to cut it so I don't stop and think about those that use flat blades so I got a long ways to go to cater to those people this one here I'm going for simplicity rather than what kind of blade you're using and hopefully they are one and the same as I learn to do simpler things this might even be too detailed for some people and that's not a cut down because I might not be good yet at making things simple I'm trying to suggest the hair directions without tracing every single hair I yeah, think you'll also have to remember when, when you have a flat blade you you're only allotted however deep your scroll yeah. saw is yeah the throat but you know like the when I did yeah. when I did that horse head I I enlarged that horse head to be 24 26 inches tall Jeez. The flat <laughs> the flat blade it was it was tough trying to I don't even know how you did it you can't do it hardly with it you can but it's hard hard as anything Charles I tell you and that's why <laughs> when I did it the second time and I did it with the the spirals oh it was much easier and then you know, I'll do much bigger pattern. You know, I'll do bigger patterns. I, that was that was you know, twenty four inches wide. Yeah. With a small spiral blade, uh, you could do these so, no problems. You get like a, a two aught or something like that. I can't get a two aught to work in my Heckner. That's not a big oh, on Heckner. I just I've never been able to get the tension right. Uh, ho hopefully, while I'm talking, y'all can see that I'm sort of bunching up. Uh, shadow areas rather than separating them all. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's right. my attempt at being simple, but go ahead. You all can talk about anything you want to. Do you, do you go through multiple blades on a single project? <laughs> yeah, because I find myself rushing myself and I also okay. stack cut. Yeah, well, I stack cut if I think it's going to be something that eventually sells, but I'm not terribly good at selling, and that's not me whining. It's me facing up to the fact that I suck at selling because I think it takes a certain personality and I don't have that in me yet or maybe it's lack of confidence I don't know I like what I do and I think I'm decent at making patterns but a salesman I am not I don't know Charles I've sold quite a few of yours <laughs> well <laughs> I haven't seen any bloody royalties there I'm, I'm telling you I told you I gotta slide you something you <laughs> no, sell you sell it I'll just give them away <laughs> Yeah, you can always count on Jamie. He sucks at selling too. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, and Jamie's been doing some. Well, Jamie and Mike both have been doing some detailed ones, but Jamie's a glutton for punishment. He hates me at least once a week. Whether most of the times it's because of my uh, the the detailed patterns. He just got done with the Walking Dead uh, mm -hmm. zombie picture, of which is his, his latest video on his. YouTube channel JP Dash Woodwork. No, that's his website. No, that's my website. JP Woodwork. Just, yeah, it's yeah. just JP Woodwork on YouTube. Yeah, you can see the you can see the Walking Dead zombie. It was very detailed. Yeah, it took twenty one hours in total. Ooh. And Jamie stands up to scroll. Can you believe that crap? Oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do it. My back can barely handle sitting oh, no. down for a while, but no way. And I know I'm talking through most of this, but I think most of y'all have gotten the point. I'm just wanting to to complete well, it. But it, if I yeah. skip over something, now we got a dark collar going into the hair. So for the sake of uh, for the sake of the pattern and getting through it quickly, I'm just going to stop there at the collar. And this is his jawbone, so I'm going to add a little bit of that shadow. And we got some hairs going on over here. Don't you mean fur? Do what? Don't you mean fur? What did I say? Hair. Well, yeah. Fur is made up of hair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a little too picky, eh? Well, I don't know. I, well, yeah, you can be the one if you want to call it fur. <laughs> you, a bit pedantic. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd like somebody to look that up in the dictionary. What's the difference between hair and fur? Or Google it or something. Fur is probably considered an animal. And hair is probably considered human. I don't know. Bloody hell, I'm overthinking it. I'm just going to do one more little suggestion of detail of the contour of the hair on the neck. And I have not done above here yet. So luckily I thought of that before I took the tape off. Let me go ahead and zoom out because there's nothing intricate going on at the top of the head and the bridge of the nose. All right. Now all I'm going to do. Since I don't have it taped down, I'm going to hold it here. Uh, 
I may do a little bit of detail of hair here so that I can make that a, 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 a pilot hole point because I've already brought that line for the nose all the way around there. And if I connect it, I may make it too brittle. So I'm going to start here. And probably right in here, I'll just add a couple hairs, and there's your pilot hole point. You don't have to trace it, each one of those individual hairs because nobody's going to notice unless they're comparing to the video. See, I'm seeing some other dang areas I should have added, but that's because I'm a detail freak. Very quickly. Probably should have left these out, but you I saw. Me. <laughs> okay. Quick reveal. This tape is probably run its course, so I will change out the tape if anybody wants to see any more. But uh, hopefully, I didn't forget to trace anything because I always find something I forgot to trace. You forgot the threads on the uh, on the collar. Oh, oh darn. <laughs> Okay, so if I forgot anything, I'm screwed because I took off all the tape. But the big reveal, hopefully this looks like a simple dog. It may be actually a little too complex for some people. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I think, me personally, I think the tighter and the more small lines is the more complex. Like those big spots, I don't think that's more complex. I just think that's, I think that's easier. Yeah. I, uh, I messed up a little bit and I would have fixed it in the editing process, uh, where I wanted to keep that light line below there, but I could, I could still shadow that in and you could still, well, let me hold it closer. You could still tell where the light is reflecting off of the eye there. So that's not necessarily a, a brutal piece. It's just smaller. But I think overall I'm happy with this and I think it sort of falls between simple and slightly complex but I, I I'm I'm actually pretty happy with this one and this is the yeah, I think that's good you should save that you should save that scan it in and show next next week or in two weeks or whatever how you convert that into a uh, yeah I, uh, I would yeah I would like to see that okay I could probably do that with everything we drew tonight uh, but I I'm usually not happy with everything I do on a rushed show but I like the way this one looks it's a very simple dog you can tell it's a dog and I, I think this one turned out okay uh, and, then, and eventually scroll it yeah eventually go through, you, uh, then go to the go through all the whole stages of oh yeah absolutely to scroll on your show absolutely uh, due to a tumultuous week I did not finish that skull but for the sake of completion I will finish that skull uh, that's that I did on last week's show showing how to use a spiral blade and I apologize to my viewers that didn't get to see that finished But I do intend on finishing it. I probably could have gotten away with completely eliminating that detail right there But to me that was showing and I can still throw that in on the pattern But that to me that showed the muscle tone, but without that I think it looks just as much like a dog I was thinking the same thing that My god you need to be there too much uh, thing like. <laughs> Uh, is anybody interested in saying anything about anything else? I will not be heard if you're not because I know the show's running long and some of these take a bit. No, my wife's already told me my cutoff time and it's about here. <laughs> yeah, but my wife did too, but I told her, you kiss my behind. I'm kidding. I'm not going to say that. My wife's a pretty big girl. She might knock me out. Well, my wife can't hear, <laughs> can't hear me is the only reason I said it, but <laughs> uh, I, I hope any questions were answered or, or if, if not, I hope you were entertained, but uh, I do want to do one thing because I was going to show you how I can simplify a pattern. So I need to stop presenting. Well, no, I can keep presenting. I just need to screen share. <laughs> I guess Jim, J Jim's got nothing to do tomorrow. He says, uh, keep going. I just got a new drink. <laughs> okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a this is an example of the way I would I would uh, try to simplify a pattern that I've already made. For those that don't know, this is uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr., uh, uh, NASCAR driver. Oh, now, I don't know. You, yeah, you might be wondering. Okay, I'm zooming real fast, and so nobody can steal this design. But you might be wondering why what this text is. It's because there are intentional floaters 
on the on the thing for realism because I thought it would look kind of dorky. Now, if I wanted to, I could have done a white line that represented a wrinkle where the letters aren't showing, and that could connect them all, but I didn't. But I'm going to zoom out or zoom in real quick, and I'll show you how we can make this. Other than that, I'll show you how we can make this a simplified pattern quite quickly, actually, in my opinion, anyway. Use a line thickness of five. I assume y'all can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Just everything that's a reflection, I'm eliminating. These are going to be completely dark sunglasses. And I'll do the same with the hair, and we'll have us a simple pattern. So it's things like this. This one is relatively easy to uh, transform into a simple pattern. Some are not, especially ones with a lot of hair. Oh, crap. Well, no, I could probably get away with that. Uh, so let me... Whoops, there's a break in the line. <laughs> Okay, that means somewhere that I did not connect. Yeah, on the oh, left, it's right on there, the left on the side left. of the eyeglass. Lower that. Thank Bottom you, sir. Left, there you go. Well, and I talked about potentially doing a giveaway. So those that left early just lost out. And it's actually a very simple way to to uh, to win. Buy a hundred of your patterns. <laughs> you ran it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 500 of them, but not the ones I already got. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you should have seen that. Last night I was in bed brainstorming. You know, what can I do? I wanna, I wanted to do a giveaway. And I, 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 there again, I don't have any uh, anything other than patterns to give away just yet because I'm not to that point yet. But I hope the people that. Never mind. I don't know how to finish that sentence. I hope that's enough for some people. But uh. Uh, Here's for me. Awesome. Okay, so okay, I need you to I need you all to watch the chat very closely. I hate to say it, but nobody on the panel is eligible. Oh, you know, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Right. Hold on, I gotta hang up. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the chat too, can you be eligible? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I will think of a my my alter my alter egos in the chat. Uh, scroll saw Mike is here. Miter Mike is in the chat. Okay. <laughs> Any, anybody named Mike is not eligible. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> now this is a oh, test of this is a test of speed because this is not a hard question. Okay, is everybody in the chat ready? And and uh, don't write anything other than your answer. That way we don't get it lost. All you have to do is as quickly as possible. I have to say it quickly too to give people time to do it. Between my first and last name put together, how many letters are there? That's all you got to answer. First person to come up with it correctly, one. Five free patterns. Too slow, want people. Tell, want me to tell you? Nobody in that chat has answered that, or are they still talking about something else? They're counting it. Oh. <laughs> Spell it out, folks. My my name's under the video. That should help. <laughs> <laughs> don't count the space between his name. No, you don't have to count the space between. No, no, there's, there's, a, there's a winner there. There's, there's a winner. There's the winner. Oh, Dessa. Dessa the woodwork. Mrs. Spock himself. Al Forte. All right. So, there, what did he say? Fourteen. No, thirteen. No, there's, four, there's 14. He's wrong. He's wrong. Dang it. You should, I shouldn't have revealed the answer. Did anybody say 14? Yes, I did. Path 1961. Pat H. <laughs> He's one of the ones that won my DVD. <laughs> Man, he just gets too lucky. I'm sorry, Al. Al, he's out in Odessa. He don't know how to count out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I have to write this one down before I can ask it because it's another how many letters thing. So bear with my silence. Does that mean they get 14 free patterns? Uh, no, he gets five free patterns. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, all due respect, Pat H., you are no longer eligible for the next one because you've already won five. Is this one, is it next giveaway for the panel? It's for everybody. Ooh. Okay. How many letters are in Makers Media Network? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you count apostrophes? Uh, no. Thirteen. Nope. No, 40, no. 15, 16, 17, 18. Wait, wait, wait. Has anybody guessed it in the chat? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh. Tell me the numbers that are going in the chat. 17. I got to recount because I counted 18. M, A, wait. Dag nibbit. Okay, every time I say a letter, say a number in your head. M, A, K, E, R, S. M E D I A N E T W O R K. That, I counted it twice. I came out to 18. Then that be Odessa. So Al actually counted it correctly this time. Yeah, this time. Okay. I think he just. I think he just guessed and girl, did one more than everybody one. else. I think Jamie guessed more than anybody. But <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Al won it. Awesome, Al and Pat H. A lot of people call him Pat because he has Pat H together. I'm gonna to think of one more giveaway. Or, I mean, the same same prize, five patterns, but I got to think of a a uh, way to win them that's not as boring as counting uh, letters. Uh, first person that can guess what my middle name starts with. Let me know. A B C D. Let me know every answer that comes up is separate. Answer what's the like What's that. the correct answer? I can't tell you that until somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> there, nobody, w. Yes. Who guessed that? Jim Bershears. I must have told him, Dag Nabbit. Did is that I for Wally? Oh, no, it's Wayne. Oh, Wayne. Oh, like John. Yeah. Is that Lots why you have so many patterns of his? Uh, actually, yes. That, that is a bragging point. I have more more John Wayne patterns than anybody on the internet. Just saying. That is a bragging right because I know for a fact I have the most. Anyway, there is a simplified pattern of Earl you know, Earnhardt Sr. I just yeah. took out the detail in the hair and the sunglasses. And the only thing that's intricate is the floaters and the letters. And all you would have to do is say the waist area around the the color floaters and you would put this floater right back in and that would aid you in placing these these loose letters here in pieces so that is a pattern i will save now did anybody feel like they were not i was not fair in this doing this giveaway or are you just mad because you count slow Anybody? <laughs> okay, the chat is really slow tonight. <laughs> okay, I uh. Okay, that's fifteen patterns. Now that these five patterns for each of these, did anybody ever guess? Oh, it was Jim Shears, Al Forte, and Pat H. Yeah. Okay. Now, I do still have three physical DVDs. If anybody is interested, if not, I won't be offended because they are downloadable off the website. But I do still have three physical DVDs. You just have to wait on the mail. I will not be offended if nobody wants to win them because they are downloadable off the website. You can get them quicker. It always worries me when Jamie has a grin on his face. I'm actually talking to Pat Lapp at the same time. Did you Did you see the uh, the chat, Charles? Uh, uh, no, I didn't. But I'm about to go over there now since I'm. L look at look at Harneal Media's uh, comment about the middle the middle initial. Uh, God, it's moving so fast. I thought your name was... Oh, okay, okay, Steve. 
that, 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 that's because of your buddy Patrick. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to get back. I'll say, well, Harnell Media was my sponsor. I'm kidding. Now, hopefully, I'll always be my sponsor. I'm a very proud member. Uh, but thank you for all the guesses. And uh, I hope y'all don't feel cheated. But I, I, I wanted to do some kind of giveaway. Someday, I'll actually have something physical to give away besides the DVDs I did way back. Way back. Uh, I think it was fun. I really hope some of y'all learned. That, that sounded really bad. I hope y'all found it. I hope a good amount of y'all learned something, if, if even if it was little. I hope uh, y'all were so, able sorry to... Sorry to interrupt, Charles. Uh, you, got right. a, you got a quick question out there. Uh, someone just asked if you got any more NASCAR patterns. Uh, technically, I shouldn't even be doing those, but I think the only ones I have are Dale Jr. and Dale Sr. And that's only because I, I'm a fan of him and that doesn't justify me doing it, but that's why those are the only ones available because I, I you know, already skating the line by doing that. Yeah, there's, there's some companies you got to be careful with because they will. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will do custom patterns for people, but I... I uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a different thing. Yeah, that, you, do, you don't want to put stuff on there and let it sit. Just because. Yeah. Now, there again, I'm skating the line. I'm admitting to it by having Dale Jr. and Dale Senior on my website. I, I may have to be asked to take them down, and I will if they ask me to. Uh, I morally, I should anyways. But I do custom patterns, and I that doesn't matter. I'll do any picture of anything uh, if the picture is workable. And uh, I, I start at fifty dollars to do that. It very rarely goes higher higher unless there's a lot of facial hair or a lot of uh, long hair like on a girl, you know, curls and stuff, but uh, generally generally it goes no higher than 50, you know, it's just a, I've never gone higher than 150 and that was a very detailed uh, landscape but 9 times out of 10 it's uh, only 50 and uh, that's that's what I do to try to make a living besides selling patterns so I hope you all understand that uh, but you, I am honest enough of a businessman that if, if the pictures you supply if I don't think I can get good results from them, I will tell you that. But if you still want me to try, I will. I just, uh, I hope y'all understand I can only do what I see. And I'm willing to do some plastic surgery. Like if you don't like the, I'm, I'm being generic here, but if you have four chance and you want me to reduce that a little bit, I can try. But there's no guarantees because I specialize in drawing what I see. <laughs> I, you'd be surprised some of the stuff people wanted me to change about photos to scroll saw patterns. Anyway, God, y'all are being quiet tonight. <laughs> we are listening. Oh, you're right. I am babbling, ain't I? Yeah. Why don't I see any wisecracks from Javi in the chat? Is he actually doing something productive? Yeah, he went to bed. He put him to sleep. He's got an early, uh, oh, got right, an early right. morning tomorrow. He hangs out with Santa all day. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to... Oh, yeah, he does have that... He has that, uh, that Santa thing. Uh... uh Although I don't have a Saturday night show, I am going to Texas Motor Speedway tomorrow. Boom! To watch me some NASCAR, I tell you what, in real life, it is, it's not the same. That is the ugliest cowboy hat I've ever seen in my life, but I love you, Jamie. I said, I'm there. Yup. I'll wear mine next week. That's just plum sexy right there. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, unless... Unless my computer froze. Uh, there's no. no activity in the chat. So. Yeah. Okay. Activity seems to have slowed down. Jamie, I appreciate you being here, even though you were late. But I'll forgive you because you're, you're working with Carl and he's a good man. And it, even though. Anyway, Michael Murray, I appreciate you being here, mister. Smiter Mike or Scroll Saw Mike, whatever the heck you are now, or the artist formerly known as B whatever. B yeah, or B-Doo, B-Doo, b, -do, b, -do, b, -do, b, -do, b -do. David Jones, the Woodworks, Charles Daring of Just a Reflection in the Glass. Okay, i got to figure out how to do this because it's a reflection again. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Steve, Katie, Mark Lindsay, Jim Brashear, Dave Hart, uh, Steve Twydell, and he just got here, I think, because he's saying, how is everybody? I'm so sorry you missed it, Steve. Uh, 
Dave Gatton, Jim, uh, I already said Jim Brashears. I know Niantic River was in there. Chris Neal and uh, Steve Neal and it is Hard Neal Media. Uh, God, I feel like I'm reading the credits on a 30-second commercial. <laughs> uh, Bob Jones. And uh, for anybody wondering, uh, this thing will stay on YouTube. Uh, so if you, it's okay, uh, Steve. You don't owe me anything, and I know the time difference is something. But hopefully, y'all will enjoy it. Hopefully, y'all did enjoy it. And I hope I was You've able to. You got a YouTube to channel. All right, but nugget. That was when that was the last show David was on. I'm just kidding. But uh appreciate y'all being on and I appreciate y'all y'all watching. And you know what I'm gonna do now, and y'all gotta do it with me since I my face isn't there. But Jamie? Smell I, my finger. Smell my finger. Oh, I need to keep the camera on me so we don't have to smell a finger here. That does look like I'm flipping people off. But anyways, y'all scroll off.